Adam Christ for MyMMANews.com, being joined by the misfit herself, Christine Faria. And she is going into 2021 just as savage as she always is. She got done checking out Knuckle Mania just a couple weeks ago. We're here to talk to her about what she thought about such an illustrious event. Let's hear it from the misfit herself. Christine, first and foremost, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, the Knuckle Mania was off the hook. The energy in there was the craziest I've ever felt any bare knuckle event ever. It was mm -hmm. awesome. The energy was big. The energy was magnetic. Um, the fights were badass. The girl fight, Taylor Sterling and uh, Sagala, that was a great fight. The Johnny Bedford, Dat, Dat fight, boxing one, boxing one all night. Mm -hmm. And I love that. You know, I love yeah. that. So it, it was exciting for me. And I was ringside. 100%. Paige Benzant, she, you know, Paige Van Zant did a, she felt, she, she, I, she was nervous. I could tell she was nervous in there. Yeah. I mean, it's something that I would imagine anybody could be nervous going into their first time. I mean, bare knuckle is just a different animal in itself. But so I wanted to ask you, obviously, you have been there, done that with multitude of organizations, kickboxing, Invicta, MMA. You've been there, done that. You fought Rachel Ostrovich and won. So now that you've seen yourself come to like the forefront of BKFC, almost finding your niche, if you will, how's that yeah. feel after all the combat sports you've participated in and getting your time now? Yeah, I'm super excited and I feel very comfortable here. Yeah. I feel like this is what... I was called to do. Um, I always pick the hard shit. <laughs> Excuse my language. But I always pick the stuff that is the hardest. And I love this the most out of everything I've done. I started with Muay Thai. Then I went mm -hmm. to MMA. Um, but being the most ex one of the most experienced in the promotion feels very different. Because mm -hmm. usually I'm not. Usually I'm the new person coming in. When I went for Muay Thai, I was new. I got I got decent at it, then went to MMA, and then I was new again. And then from MMA, I went to boxing for to prepare mm -hmm. for better school. So I just been new, 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 new. Now I feel very comfortable, and I feel more comfortable in boxing, and I feel very, very comfortable in bare knuckle. I feel like I already know this. I feel like it's just me getting better at my boxing now to perfect my bare knuckle. Mm -hmm. You know, so I believe that I'm going to take over the 125. Then I'm going to move up to 130, 135 and dominate there as well. So, I mean, you, what you were just saying there could take me in so many different directions just because, I mean, we could go every which way. But I want to try and keep it just particularized on what your experience at Knuckle Mania was like, because Tyler Goodjohn, I mean, I got done talking to him a couple of days ago. And he just yeah. could not stop saying the best things about you. Obviously, this is before in Uncle uh, Mania. Uh, just the, he said the sweetest things about you, just how much you were embracing him, how much you would help him. And then I see your posts about Reggie Barnett. I mean, I've talked to him plenty of times. He went to the BKFC tryouts. Is essentially not a known person as far as, you know, in the combat sports realm. And now he's at the forefront of BKFC himself, number one contender, arguably. Yeah. But you are there, too, and you're pumping these people out. You're supporting your you're essentially a business and a game woman for the business. Am Absolutely. I correct in saying that? Absolutely. I'm I'm here to help the, the business grow. The better they do, the better I do. I just fell in love with it. So I do want to help it grow in any way, shape or form. That's why I've adjusted a couple things in my game to um, to be better for myself and the promotion. And I'm learning the business side now. I'm not just the fighter. I have to know both sides of this. So it's, it's a learning process. It's been a, a tough one. I, I take the long road and I take the rough road always, but I'm learning. Of course, always a learning process, especially in combat sports. But again, I'm going to keep emphasizing you being one of the top dogs right now. So beating Britain Hart. And then, obviously, Paige Van Zandt bringing a ton of money into the organization, a ton of attention that might not have been there before. So right. you're right there at the top of this. And you just made mention today that you were thinking about Taylor Starling makes sense for you. But then again, you could potentially take the route of Harina Peralta. There's so many options for you. What do you think is the fight for you? What makes sense and what do you want? 
I just want to fight somebody with heart and skill and is not going to is going to take their camp seriously is going to give everything they got because we're here to represent for the women and we're here to get more fights and be more entertaining and take it seriously. So I want to fight any of these fighters that are 150% about it. Hella Peralta is a tough woman. She's 150% in this. She is a great fight. Do I like some things she's did in the past? No, I don't. I think that we should have fought. I don't think she won the, won the match, the first match. So I wanted that rematch. Her walking away and vacating the belt really upset me. And I felt disrespected along with disrespecting the promotion, giving us that opportunity because we don't get those handed to us every day. Mm -hmm. um, I just want whoever is next. You know, I, I, I can't say anybody specific because I don't know. Do I want Britton Hart? No, because I beat her. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I know I'll beat her again. I know she she's made some improvements, but she's made some improvements against people that are not even close to my level. So I feel like she still needs a little bit more time to catch up, to be able to mm -hmm. change, maybe have some chance in a fight with her and I. Um, mm -hmm. The other girls in the, in the promotion, they're great too. Taylor Starling put, showed a lot of heart oh. and she could take damage. Sagala did too, though. Sagala took damage. She got, she got knocked down, got right back and fought that whole fight. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> Whatever Dave and Nate want, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to mm. demolish whoever's in front of me. And that seems to be the, the topic of discussion when it comes to the misfit. Like you said, nobody touches your tenacity when it's go time, right? I mean, that's the right. one thing that's different about BKFC is you meet in the middle and then it's go opposed to the yeah. separate to your corners. And then you work out, you have a feeling out process. It almost seems advantageous for you because you are a fast starter. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're all kind of fast starters in this right. because it's two, where it's two minute rounds, you know, it's two minute rounds and you can't just let a round slip by. And that's what I think Paige Benzant found out because I seen her, I thought like before the fight, I was like, she might have a hard time adjusting to the two minute rounds and how fast, because you could do that stuff in practice. But when you're in the moment, your adrenaline pumping, someone's coming at you trying to take your head off. Um you're not thinking about, oh, I only got two minutes. I only got two minutes. It's just like about trying to stay alive, really, at the time. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I seen her like kind of circling out, kind of taking her time. And when she did kind of pick up her pace, I feel like she was breaking. She, she could have broke Britain down if she started that later. I mean, earlier in the, mm -hmm. in the rounds. But Britain Hart brought it to her. Britain Hart knew it. With, you know, she was the experienced fighter. So she yeah. knew what she had to do. And she wanted it bad. And she, she got it that night. She definitely did get it. She got what she deserved and, uh, you know, great for her, obviously. But obviously right. you said it's up to it's up to Nate. It's up to Dave. When do you ideally want to come back? Well, I'm, at, I'm back in May. <laughs> you are back in May. Do you have a confirmed opponent yet? I do not. No, I, do I mean, not. there's some talk. I'm like, da, 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 da. I can't really say anything right now. I don't know for sure. So right. I'm just waiting on my uh, management to come back with a word and then. I'm st I'm just getting ready though. Like it just doesn't matter. Ready. Yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna. Uh, yeah, I'm coming back from uh, my surgery, and I feel mm. great. I'm feeling strong, and I feel like my last fight. Um, I think she would have got finished a little bit faster if I didn't have the problems I had going on with my shoulder. My mm -hmm. whole shoulder was blew out. So, um, yeah, I think this fight's gonna be great, and I'm gonna be a lot. I'm gonna be hybrid, like before. <laughs> And now that you have your shoulder taken care of, can you tell us any of the differences that you've blatantly seen from the gate since you've come back from surgery? I just, right now I'm in the strengthening phase, so I'm not, right. I'm not like a hundred percent, but I, I have a little bit more time to build that, but I, I don't have the same. Cause when I used to punch, I used to feel like it put like a piercing pain back here. And it was something that I tore. I had tore. My whole shoulder was torn. So mm -hmm. I, and I didn't know that as I was just fighting through the pain. So when I would miss, it would hurt so bad, like on the pads or something. Like if like I missed the pad or something, it would just, and I didn't hit. Oh my God. It was just painful. Now I don't have that pain. Right. You know, everything's fixed. Everything's, yeah. nothing's torn anymore. Right. So 
I can imagine when the adrenaline dump happens, especially like in a fight, it's a little bit different. But when you're training and having that constant little pain in the behind and, you know, in the back of your head, that has to hinder training, too. So yeah. I would oh, expect yeah. a different misfit going forward, needless to Absolutely. say. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to get your, t- your uh, take on a couple of things. Obviously, you were talking about the Dat Nguyen, Johnny Bedford fight, and we had talked a little bit about Reggie. What do you think about what's going on in that division? Obviously, Dat Nguyen being the champion, he had talked about going up to 45. Obviously, now Reggie has Chop Chop Corley, who's going to be welcomed into BKFC. There's just so much happening in that division. What do you make of it? Ooh, this fight, when I seen it the other day, because I'm friends with Chop Chop and I'm friends with Reggie. Oh, my God. It's going to be a badass. Those are they're two great boxers. Yeah. So it's going to be beauty to watch them bare knuckle boxing and to see how Chop Chop adjusts to the bare knuckles and how um, Reggie takes on the experience of Chop Chop. Chop Chop's no joke. Mm-mm. And Reggie is no joke. <laughs> so it's just, uh, that's going to be, that's a treat for everybody for sure. Yeah. yeah I can't wait just, to see. The, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. no you're, you're the, you're the interview. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no. And so in the division, dad said he was going to go up. I didn't, I didn't hear that. He had, he had discussed something about, uh, when I was talking to Reggie, Reggie had said he had mentioned not facing him, vacating the belt. Reggie said a couple different things. Wow. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, yeah, does yeah, not want but, it. He does not want that smoke. I don't think he just keeps. I, I don't know. I re- I really don't know. It, it's a fight that makes know. so much sense though, and it would be so fun to watch. I don't understand because yeah, that would be on paper that has the experience in boxing. But yeah. Reggie, with the yeah, with the with the bare knuckle, that would be a great would, fight. Oh my gosh, it would be an amazing fight, but. It is what it is. We get Chop Chop Corley. What do you think is going to be next for Johnny Bedford? He's probably going to tr- – he's going he's gonna to want that rematch. Yeah. For sure. He's going to want that rematch. But he said he was I, – I remember him saying he was going to move up to 145. Okay, maybe I'm mistaking and flip-flopping. But uh, – Yeah. But either okay. way, okay. either way, okay. Okay, yeah. That's what Johnny was going to do because Johnny was going right. to – he wanted to win this, have all the titles, then move up, mm-hmm. and then right. get it in the 145 or, right. yeah, the 145 division. Gotcha. So, yeah, so maybe Dad isn't leaving that division because I was like, damn, I didn't hear that part. <laughs> so maybe but, maybe Reggie will get the opportunity to fight him. Right. Especially you know? if he does beat Chop Chop, you think? Yeah. Yeah. He'll, what other – where else is he going to go? Yeah, that's all. That's all. They can't deny that after that. Mm-hmm. I don't think. And again, it's no disrespect to Chop Chop because he is who he is. So anything right. can happen exactly. in that fight. No, no, no. Absolutely. We're just talking hypothetical right. if that happens. And if yeah. Chop Chop wins, then I'm sure he'll get that next. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because of his because of who he is, mm-hmm. you know, it's crazy. He fought Mayweather and yeah. gave him <laughs> trouble. So, <laughs> man, this is a big this is a big deal for um Reggie too yeah you yeah know, this is good it's good especially good so, for his story the whole you know coming from the background and making it to what was what his story from prison to pay-per-view he says yeah and it, it's right. a beautiful story it's awesome i love getting to talk to him he's just a solid guy but uh, he really he's a real good man like seriously like, yeah in person like there's a lot of people that act good but that dude is seriously good when we like when we're recording it's always good and then when we're like you know trimming the fat and just kind of talking we'll end up talking for like 30 minutes extra just because yeah. we're just BSing off the, because he's a nice guy. He's just awesome yeah. to talk to. Yeah, he's a good but, guy. But uh, everybody's so used to seeing the misfit and her, her misfit ways, taking people out, right. going to hurt people. But this past Valentine's Day, we got to see a different misfit <laughs> serving <laughs> breakfast in bed. What was that about? And, yeah, uh, my poor- that was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, my poor wife, though, I, I don't I, I was trying to make French toast. So I picked the English muffins because I was trying to get less carbs because the bread seems so big, <laughs> so much bigger. So I was like, oh, that's a smaller. So when I brought it to her, I did what I brought it because I, I did. I looked in the uh, cupboard and I didn't see like if she wanted. I didn't see the syrup. Mm-hmm. I ended up finding it later, but she ended up using jelly. So I was just like, hey, here, do you, do you want this? Like, 
wake up, you know, have Valentine's Day. <laughs> just try to be cool, you know, just trying to like serve her breakfast in bed, trying to be I, a good partner. You do more for your partner than what some other people can say they do for their partner. So you're doing the right <laughs> thing, right? But uh, so yeah. I don't want to keep you too much longer. It's been great to talk to you. But uh, so if we had to talk about Chris Lieben, huge fight for him going out the way he did. And now he, you're going to get to work with him behind the scenes and everything with BKFC. That has to be awesome. Such legends behind the scene to work with it has to be a great experience. Yeah. Everywhere I go around there, there's legends. I just met Shaq. Yeah. I went up to Shaq. Okay, check this out. So I'm, I'm there. I'm chilling. I'm like, the last time I didn't meet him, I just didn't go up to him because I didn't want to bug him. I'm just, I'm, that's how I am. I'm like, I'm not going to bug him. He has so many people mess with him. So this time I was like, I'm, I got to get a picture with Shaq this time. So I was like, I went up to him. I was like, hey, can I get a picture with you? I'm the number one bare knuckle boxer. And he's like, I know who you are. And I'm like, <laughs> you don't need to know who I am. Like, how do you know who I am, dude? You know? So it's pretty cool, you know, to have someone like Shaq know who you are. And he was super cool. Got a picture with him. And yeah, it's, it's just crazy. Obviously. Uh, I mean, relatively like similar age groups, but a young girl growing up seeing Shaquille O'Neal, like yeah. the prize of the NBA. And now he's telling you, right. I know who you are. And if, yeah. I mean, honestly, let, let's be honest, anybody who sees your fighting style cannot be not a fan of your style. That has to be so humbling and such an honor. Yes, so much. It's just like, wow, okay, Shaq knows who I am. That's great. And that's like David Feldman in the promotion just coming together and reaching out and doing their side of things. That's why I do my mm -hmm. best to do my side of things, to keep everything in the positive light and keep everything rolling positively. Because we're all, all those fighters help build yeah. the company that's what's the company so i just do my best because i see them working so hard and making leaps and bounds in their progress since since day one you know i've been here since i say be uh day two because i was at bkfc two. i was supposed to fight on so um i've been here since day two, <laughs> day two. <laughs> and watching 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 the growth is it's 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 cool you know yeah it's definitely awesome we look forward to seeing you fight in the future and uh honestly christine it was an honor for me to talk to you I look Thank forward to you. talking to you in the future. I really hope that you'll take some time when you uh, when you can talk about your opponent. Come back on. We can chat about it. And uh, best of luck. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Christine, the Misfit Fiera, ladies and gentlemen. She was kind enough to join my MMA News tonight to talk about Knuckle Mania. So much about what's going on behind BKFC scenes. We appreciate the time with the Misfit, Christine Fiera. For Christine, I am Adam Christ. Make sure you keep it locked to MyMMANews.com for all your fight news needs.